New measles cases have been confirmed in Florida, New York, and Pennsylvania as health officials work to contain the winter outbreak. The disease has now been identified in 11 states this year. In West Texas, at least one child has died, and nearly 160 cases have been diagnosed. At least half of those infected were unvaccinated. CBS News medical contributor Dr. Celine Gounder joins us here in studio. She's also the editor at large for public health at KFF Health News. We keep talking about this because it keeps spreading. It is a big deal. First of all, let's talk about the impact of the measles on the immune system. What can you tell us? So the measles virus itself will infect some immune cells in our immune system. And research done by Michael Minna and others at Harvard have shown that this uh, can erase some of our immune system's memory to other infections. So how does this work? We have a graphic here to show you. So let's say you have two babies. As they grow, their immune systems mature and they both gain immunity to different infections as represented by these different colored marbles. So one baby gets vaccinated against measles at age one and then later again at age four. This baby gains immunity to measles as you can see here with the red marbles. The other baby on the right does not get vaccinated and is not immune to measles. At age five, both kids start school. The kid who has been vaccinated, uh, excuse me, the kid who has not been vaccinated, the one on the right gets the measles. And if that child is lucky, it's a mild case and they don't need to be hospitalized. They do develop immunity to measles from the infection. But as you can see, that jar is less full. They have less immunity to other infections because oh. the measles virus has caused damage to their immune system. So let's say by age six, kids will continue to build up immunity, but the unvaccinated child who got measles still has a weaker overall immune system a year later, wow. leaving them at higher risk for other infections. Wow, I did not know that. Uh, that puts it into perspective for us, certainly. All right, so let's talk about HHS Secretary Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s response to this. So in a pre-recorded interview this week, he mentioned Texas doctors were seeing success with alternative treatments. Think cod liver oil, vitamin A. Are those effective? So there is uh, data for vitamin A in terms of preventing the most severe complications of measles. This is something that was studied in the 1980s in countries like Indonesia that at that time were very low income. You had very high rates of malnutrition, uh, something we don't see, honestly, in this country. Uh, vitamin A deficiency is something we see in less than 1% of people in this country. So it is effective in populations that are highly malnourished to, to prevent those severe consequences, can help prevent blindness. But this should not be seen as a replacement for measles vaccination. It's really something we add in addition to vaccination in very impoverished settings. I want to circle back to that in a second, but I do want to ask you about two more. Mm -hmm. Budesonide and clarith... Clarithromycin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for <laughs> saving me. What are those? How effective are they? Sure. So budesonide is a steroid. Uh, we often use steroids for people who are hospitalized with viral infections. It does not treat the infection itself. What's happening, what's landing those folks in the hospital is they are having too much inflammation. Their immune system is creating too much inflammation. That's why they're getting really sick. And the steroids help tamp that down. Uh, the other medication, clarithromycin, is an antibiotic. And the reason that's given, remember I was saying it weakens your immune system mm -hmm. to have measles. It leads, leaves you susceptible to numerous other infections, bacterial infections. And cl cl clarithromycin, see I have trouble saying it too. <laughs> clarithromycin is a, a, one of many antibiotics used to treat these additional infections, bacterial infections, that you can wow. get in severe measles cases. Okay, so we discuss every time you come here how important vaccination is, but Secretary Kennedy did write in a Fox News op-ed that vaccinations are important, but he said it's a personal choice. Now, do you feel like that phrasing or approach is strong or urgent enough? The challenge here is vaccination is something individuals do for themselves, but has an impact on other people. So your choice, for example, to drink and drive. That is a choice you make for yourself, but it can also affect other people. And that's why, you know, it's so controversial because we're talking about you're doing something for yourself, but also for the benefit of others in your community. All right, Dr. Celine Gounder, thank you.